All righty. Hey, everybody. Hey, Sophia. Hi, Andrew. We have two Christians. Hi, Christians. Hi, Stella. Hi, Elisa. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Yasmin. Hi, hey, Sophia. Lauren. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Allison. Hey, Achute. Hey, Abigail. We have Hello. Anna and Anya. Oh, it's the alliteration for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amy, look, we have an Amy. I don't know if you noticed that. Shout out to Amy. <laughs> I resonate. Hey, Kathy. Hey, London. Hey, Casey. Jordan. Hi, Moni. Hey, Jack. These names are coming in so fast. Oh my god, there's a Michaela. <gasps> <laughs> Hi, Michaela. <laughs> there's two Amy's now. Three and Queen. This is great. Let's look for, let's see if there's a Logan. <laughs> there's Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're Zooming in from, and welcome to the Multicultural Open House Life at Yale Current Student Panel. Please note you can use the Q&A panel at the bottom of the screen to communicate technical issues at any time, and one of my colleagues will assist. You can also use the Q&A feature throughout to ask questions. We'll ask that you hold off until our student panelists do their intros, and then you can start sending in questions related to student life. Uh, just a reminder, this session is being recorded and will be shared after the meeting on the Multicultural Open House website. But without further ado, I would like to introduce Jill Carrera, Assistant Director at Yale Undergraduate Admissions. Welcome. Thank you so much, Maura. Hey, everybody. Thank you again. Like Maura said, thank you for joining us to what our office has started colloquially referring to as the Friday Night Lights panel, but accurately referred to as our Mo Student Life panel. My name is Jill Carrera. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm going to be the moderate, moderator for tonight's panel. A little bit about me. I'm one of the assistant directors in the Yale admissions office, and I'm actually also a Yale class of 2017 alum. So really happy to be here to get to ask some questions of our students and even learn a little more about them. I know a little bit about them right now, but I'm going to learn even more alongside all of you. Now, before I hand it off for some introductions, I do want to cover kind of what the next hour is going to look like. First, we're going to be doing those intros that I mentioned, and then I'm going to start by asking some of the more frequently asked questions we get about student life on Yale's campus. And once we get through those, we're going to move into those live Q&As from all of you. For those of you who might not have been on Zoom before, the Q&A feature is right at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Um, but again, like Maura said, we're going to wait until after the intros to start using that because we might answer some of your questions at the beginning, uh, and we want to make sure that we do get to all of the questions, hopefully, probably not all of them. Them, but we're going to try our best to get to some of the most uh, asked questions that you guys have. So we really, really hope that you leave tonight's session with a great idea of what campus life is like for our students. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our students for some intros. Crystal, do you want to go ahead and get us started off? Yeah. So hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Crystal. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm from Bronx, New York. Um, I'm a senior in Grace Hopper College, and I'm majoring in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. Um, I'm also a first-generation student, um, and on campus, I am on two dance teams, Sabrosura, which is our Latin dance team, and Stepping Out, which is our step team. I'm also really involved with um, lighting design for theater shows and for dance shows, which has been really fun, and it's something I got involved with as soon as I got to campus. Um, and right now I am living on campus. I'm in Hopper College. Um, and it's been great being back at Yale and in, in New Haven and getting that sense of community back again. So thank you guys for being here. 
Hi everyone, my name is Amy. I am a junior in Morse College. I'm studying psychology, originally also from New York City. Shout out to New York. Um, I went to Stuyvesant High School. I am class of 2022 and some things I'm involved with on campus. So I'm a tour guide, which is a lot of fun. Um, I currently serve as the president of Morse College Council, which is also a lot of fun, a lot of community building. Something that I love, love so much is I serve as peer liaison for the Asian American Cultural Center. So I have 39 beautiful PLEs that I love to mentor and, um, and guide throughout Yale. And currently I am also enrolled, um, but off campus. So living in New Haven, which I love, can't wait to talk about it. And I'm so excited to be here. Hi everyone, my name's Denasia. I use she, her pronouns. I am originally from New Haven, Connecticut. Um, I went to Hopkins School. I am currently class of 2022. Well, I'm 2022 plus one, I've been calling it. I'm currently taking a leave of absence um, where I am volunteering at a hurricane relief nonprofit in Puerto Rico while also working a couple of jobs remotely and participating in my extracurriculars that I've been involved with at Yale so far. I am in Saybrook College. I'm an African American Studies major and I'm getting a certificate in Education Studies, which is possible because it is one of our four multidisciplinary academic programs, um, which we can talk about a little bit more later if you're interested. Um, on campus, I'm really involved in Saybrook. I am on our Saybrook College Council and I work in our head of college office as an office aide. And I'm also involved in the affinity groups of our Saybrook College Council. I'm really involved in Dwight Hall, which is our Center for Social Justice and Community Service, and it's entirely student run, which is really cool. So through them, I am an urban fellow. So I um, am partnered with a local New Haven organization, the City Plan Office, and I work for them a few hours each week. Um, and I also teach health classes in New Haven public schools through Dwight Hall. Um, and then my final, final Dwight Hall organization is the Yale Undergraduate Prison Project. And it's one of the groups I'm working with right now, and I'm helping um, run a hotline for the Connecticut Bail Fund. Um, for incarcerated individuals right now. I'm also really involved in the Afro-American Cultural Center. I was a board member for our Black Solidarity Conference. Um, I tutored a student through the Urban Improvement Corps with them, and then I am involved in stepping out with Crystal. Um, other fun facts about me are that I'm also a first-generation low-income student. I've been involved with the Women's Center where I worked as a staffer my first year, um, and I studied abroad in Ecuador. Hey everyone, I'm Logan. Um, I use he him his pronouns. I'm from Lakewood, Colorado, so it would be no surprise that I went to Lakewood High School. Um, like Denasia, I'm a rising junior on a gap year slash leave of absence, um, but I've still been very busy. Um, I think I've been producing a radio play remo uh, remotely. Um, I've been doing dramaturgy research for another remote play. Um, I've been doing some voice acting for like a radio drama. Um, I've been working on two different like playwriting entries for playwriting contests. Um, and I've also been doing some coding for a game I've been developing. So even though I'm not officially like a rolled in Yale right now, um, there's still a lot to do. I'm in the very best residential college at Yale, which is of course, Silliman College, um, an English and theater studies double major. And on campus, I'm involved in Word, which we like to say is the oldest and most hyped performance poetry group on campus. Um, I'm also involved in HTE or Heritage Theater Ensemble, which is Yale's Black Arts Collective, which was founded by Angela Bassett in 1979. Um, so that's a cool fun fact about us. I'm also just involved in tons of theater with acting, playwriting, all sorts of different production roles. I do lots of creative writing on campus, and I also just love hanging around the AFM house or the Afro-American Cultural Center, as we call it. Um, so that's me, and I look forward to talking to you guys. Hi, everyone. My name is Michaela. Um, I am a rising sophomore um, for the whole year. I'm taking a leave of absence um, in Hopper College. I'm from Summit, New Jersey. Um, and I'm a perspective econ and English major um, and outside of academics on campus, I'm involved with um, various organizations in Dwight Hall. One is New Haven Reach, which is a college mentoring organization for high school seniors. Another is Yup, which Denasia mentioned, um, and I'm on the advocacy team for that. And um, for the past year and until now, we've been working on trying to get a bill passed to make uh, prison phone calls free in Connecticut. Um, I'm also involved with Women's Leadership Initiative, which is a really amazing way for me to just get to know more Yale women. And we put on annual like big conferences, but also small, we bring in speakers throughout the year. Um, and we just published a book about celebrating 50 women at Yale, which is really exciting. Um, 
I've also like dabbled in like, ethics bowl in my first year and also a little bit in the Yale Daily News, which is um, a, our biggest publication. Um, and I'm also currently doing some political science research and we're at like looking into why women are less represented in politics than men in the United States. Um, and yeah, so currently I'm on a leave of absence. Um, and as Logan said, there's still so much to do. I'm in Seoul, South Korea, kind of trying to be a sponge for the culture here during the day, but then also super involved with extracurriculars and my on-campus job still. So I still feel very connected to Yale, which has been really nice. And I'm so excited to talk more about student life today. All righty. So those are all of our student presenters. I'm going to ask all of them to come back on camera right now. Um, obviously, y'all, I don't know. I need to add some things to my schedule because after hearing all of you say all of those things, I'm a little like, wow, I'm not doing enough. Um, but we're going to move into some of those questions that we often get from students when it comes to student life on campus. And the first question I have, I think, is actually a pretty fun one. It's, can you share an activity or a club or a sport, whatever it is, that you joined here on campus but you had actually never explored prior to coming to Yale and I know you all kind of mentioned little things but are one of those things like maybe something you never actually thought you would be doing until you got here and you can kind of popcorn whoever wants to jump in jump in I can start us off oh Denise Michaela okay I can start with them. Um, so, some, so I identify as Chinese American and the crazy part is all throughout my childhood did not get involved in anything related to that except for taking language classes. So when I got to Yale, um, I became a first year representative for the Chinese American Cultural Center, not the Cultural Center, the Chinese American Students Association, which is under the Asian American Cultural Center. Um, and that was a incredible way for me to not only connect with other Chinese American students, but figure out what part of my identity identity I was trying to discover, what I already knew, um, and what, what was left. So um, after serving as first year rep for, for a semester, I became cultural chair and we produced a whole cultural show and it was so cool. It ranged from, from piano to, to like break dancing, but Chinese style. I don't know, but it was cool. Um, and yeah, I think it's crazy that it was such a big part of me, but I never had the opportunity to explore it. And Yale really allowed for me to do that in a very comfortable and safe space. So that's my Janae, do you want to go next? Yes. Um, I'm not sure if this is true for Crystal as well, but for me, I had never stepped before I came to Yale. Um, I was familiar with Steph, for those of you who might not be. Steph is an African American dance form that's derived from the religious and celebratory practices of African dancers. Um, so I had never done it before, but when I went to Bulldog Days, which is our accepted students day, I saw the Step team perform and they just were electric and had so much energy and they seemed so cool and exciting. And then I actually didn't end up auditioning my first year because I was nervous. I auditioned as a sophomore, which I think was really fun um, because it kind of shows that it's never too late to get involved in things. We actually had a, a staff member last year who auditioned and joined the team as a junior, which is really cool. Um, but I ended up being like completely welcome into like this like mini family, as cliche as that might sound. Um, we do a bunch of different things together. We have all of these holiday activities. We have like big sibs, little sibs. We have um, lots of performances together throughout the like New Haven community in addition to the Yale community itself. And then we also ended up competing, which I never imagined myself doing. So this fall, we actually performed at the Lincoln Center in New York. So the entire STEP team had this big trip to New York City for a day and they had professional like makeup artists and hair people come and we got all fancy and competed. So I never imagined myself doing that. And I'm so, so grateful that I found SO, which is what we call stepping out. Um, I would quickly just add, like for me, it's been research. I never um, really expected myself to do research. I always kind of thought of it as more of a STEM thing. Um, but this summer and also going into my leave of absence, I was like, what should I do to spend um, time like getting some sort of academic skill throughout this year? Um, and I decided to email my academic advisor that was assigned to me last year and said that I was super interested in her research, sent her my resume, and she responded and said, actually, I need urgent help with my research um, and you can start now. And she gave me a project right away. And so now all of a sudden, like from one day to the next, I started being able to do paid research while on a leave of absence. Um, and 
it's been really amazing. I have absolutely zero experience with research other than research papers in high school. Um, and I also don't have, I've taken one data science class, um, an intro data science class. And I still, I feel like I'm learning on the job. I still feel like I'm adding value, um, but like learning a lot. Um, and it's been really cool to like work hand in hand with my advisor who I only spoke to maybe once last year because I switched my advisor. Um, but still was so receptive to like getting me on her team and I'm still in the early stages of that. It's been a couple weeks. Um, but it's a really cool thing to also feel like I'm connected to Yale in an academic way, even during my leave. Wow. Surprise research. We've got some Lincoln Center casual break dancing. Um, you all are doing so many things, but there's also so many things to do on this campus. So I completely understand that. Um, I did forget before we started these kind of very common questions that we get that the Q&A is now open. I know some of you were already taking initiative and throwing some questions in that Q&A, but please, this is the time to start doing that. Um, we're going to get to them in a little bit. We're going to have a few more questions that we kind of always get, but after that, we're going to dive right into that live Q&A. So use that function and we'll probably get to a lot of your questions during this session. But one other question that I want to ask is, you know, what are your go-to academic resources around campus? And what are some, you know, unexpected resources that were here to help students succeed that you found yourself stumbling upon when you got here? I can start with this one. Go for it. Um, so the Center for Teaching and Learning is an amazing resource. It's kind of the hub for all of the like academic resources you could ever need. Um, and they're completely accessible to everyone at no extra cost, um, which was something that was definitely very different coming from high school where it was like, oh, you need a tutor, like that's gonna cost you a pretty penny. Um, but now like if I need the extra help, like it is always there. So I know my first year, I was struggling a little bit with my calculus class and my professor was just like, oh, it seems like you might need a little extra help. I'm gonna connect you with this like private tutor. It'll be you and this one other student. You just have to fill out this form and submit it and he'll figure out like when, what time works best for you guys. And by the next week I was meeting with a tutor weekly and like getting the extra help, like one-on-one -on -one help that I needed, which I thought was amazing. And it's also great that the professors know these resources exist and it's not like difficult to find them. It's not like you have to go like searching through websites and trying to figure out how to get access to them. Like everything's very accessible and easy to find, which is awesome. I love the Center for Teaching and Learning personally. Sometimes when I'm reading applications, I will just go there because it's so great to feel the hub of student activity and like people studying around me. So I definitely think that's that's a good one to mention, Crystal. Michaela, did you have something? Yeah, I was just, I was gonna quickly add, like for me, the most unexpected resource um, were my professors because coming from a small high school, I was pretty used to being in constant contact with my professors. And I was, I basically had just accepted it as a fact that that would not be the case in college. Um, but in college, 100%, I have felt so supported by my professors and it's not only been helpful, but also like one of the most fun parts of my academic experience in college, like looking forward to going to office hours and being able to get to know my professor. Um, and it's like even more rewarding to have your professor like know you by name, know you by a little bit of background. Um, and I just like my first semester I took um, my favorite class that I've taken so far in my life, which is my English class. And my professor met with each student as a requirement twice per essay. And we had five essays in total. And my econ class similarly was a requirement to have either a coffee or a meal with my professor during the first month of class. And I've had like many professors that I go to offers hours with and they'll end up asking me about my interests, ending up like my math teacher ended up helping me plan what math classes to take as a non-math major for the next semester, um, like according to my econ interests. So I, I really have felt so supported by my professors and it's been so fun to also just be able to make these connections with people who are so incredible and so like far ahead in their field. I love that. Yes. I mean, our professors, I, that's one of the things that is their primary job while they're here. They're here to teach you. They're here to be supports for you. And that's a huge part of kind of their role on campus. So actually, we're getting so many questions in the live Q&A that I think we're just going to turn it over to them because I want to make sure that we get to as many of those questions as we possibly can. Um, one of the first ones that we got was, can you elaborate on your on-campus jobs? So obviously, you're all on the student panel. You're all RCs, recruitment coordinators. But I know that all of you do other things as well. Um, RC's recruitment coordinators are one of the jobs in the admissions office and feel free to talk about that if you want to, but also feel free to talk about anything else and other campus jobs that you have. Uh, 
I, Dunesia, you go for it. <laughs> yes, I can start us off. Um, I mentioned one of my other student jobs in addition to being an RC, which is being a head of college office aide. So in each residential college, there are a number of positions for students in that college to work like directly with their head of college who is in charge of the social life. Um, in their res college, sorry, I said college like a thousand times in that sentence, but um, I really have loved that job and I ended up applying for it at the end of my first year and it was really easy to find out about because the first year counselors or FROCOs who are seniors in our residential college like advertised it really well and they all were open for me to like go to them to talk about the job and prepare for the application for the interview etc um, and I really have loved being a part of that community because it just allows me to go to every single college event that we have like I ended up even staying during commencement week and helping out with senior events which was so cool but there are so many other jobs that you can have on campus so in the past I've also worked at our women's center as a staffer and I got that job by just joining the women's center mailing list like there's a big extracurricular bazaar at the beginning of the year and you just sign up and they tell you a bunch of things that are happening lots of opportunities for fellowships jobs speaker events, et cetera. And then you end up finding out a lot about a lot of things through that. And then I've also had other random jobs on campus as well. So like I'm a tour guide. I began that job during the summer since I was in New Haven as a resident. And then it ended up carrying over to the school year for me. I also have served um, as like a student bartender and wait staff for reunion events. Um, and there are just so many other jobs available on campus. I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in. Um, oh, actually, sorry, one other job that I will talk about quickly because I think it's really cool that I'm doing right now is through Dwight Hall, the Center for Social Justice that I mentioned before. And they ended up, they're paying me to volunteer. Well, I'm not volunteering because I'm getting paid, but to partner with a New Haven organization and support them in whatever I, way I can. So they do that um, to acknowledge the fact that certain students, um, specifically students on financial aid, may not be able to volunteer with all, all the organi organizations that they might want to. So they're able to um, compensate us for that work. And they also provide stipends for students who aren't on financial aid or don't receive federal work study. And I think that's really cool that Dwight Hall like, is working to make that accessible for everyone. They even have a fund right now for students who are remote enrolled remotely at home who have additional familial obligations to pay them for that work as well acknowledging that that is um like something that they have to do and that their financial situation like might require funds for that um so i really love that yale does create all of those opportunities for student employment and makes it make it so easy to find and accessible for everyone i was going to mention that something i didn't expect going to college is that the jobs just the, the concept of being paid for things that you enjoy and would do for free blows my mind. So um, like Danasia, I'm also a tour guide in, in addition to being a recruitment coordinator. And I would give tours every single day for free. I think they're so fun. Um, it's nice to meet other people and to let them know why I think Yale is really cool. But aside from that, um, I've also been a Chinese tour guide, which is awesome. So meeting Chinese tourists. And that's been another avenue of fun on campus. Um, and then also my job as a peer liaison. So I get paid to be essentially 39 first years, like best friend, older sister figure. And that's amazing. I get paid to bake cookies for them, um, to give them advice. There's just, it's, it blows my mind. And it's really easy to um, balance alongside schoolwork also because of the support system that so many people have mentioned here. So yeah, definitely didn't expect it, but I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tanisha and Amy. So we have another question, which is, how does Yale accommodate new students moving into dorms? And I'm actually gonna move this broader and ask, you know, what was your move in like your first year? Uh, if you could just tell our nice viewers kind of what that was like. I mean, I, I just came out of my first year um, and move-in was one of the most, um, exciting. I was very nervous um, to be moving into Yale, but as soon as I got there, I had, I had done a pre-orientation program. So I had done foot, which is the hiking program. So I was in my most disgusting state of my entire life. Um, and I came on campus and my FROCO was like waiting for me right outside of um, my dorm. And FROCO is first year counselor. So it's an upper, it's a senior who um, lives with first years, they're in your college. They're the most incredible resource in the world. I'm sure we'll talk more about them because they are incredible. Um, and they, and he knew my name. He was like, hey, Michaela, he said hi to my parents. Um, 
there were people like just grabbing all of my stuff, bringing them up. Like I didn't even see my stuff. They just grabbed it. Um, and then I went to my suite, everybody was moving in. Um, there, there was just so much, like it felt so personal. It was like overwhelming. There were tons of people, there was so much going on, but it also felt so personal. Um, like I was brought into this family, brought into this college right away. Um, and it really felt like, especially like my college hopper, I felt instantly a part of that community. Um, just like, because people were treating me as if they had known me forever right away. Um, so it was definitely an overwhelming day, but it also felt like instantly, like I was excited to be like, get to know these people better and be a part of this community. Alrighty. I feel like you covered it, Michaela. I feel like that's everyone's first year moving experience. I remember mine way back when, and it was very similar. My dean came out and like knew my name before I'd even like stepped foot onto the sidewalk. It, that is the kind of atmosphere you're walking into when you come to Yale. Um, but I have another question. We've actually gotten this question a few times from students already in the chat, which is, what is your favorite tradition at Yale and why? And I'll let you guys take this however you want. I know residential colleges have traditions. I know the whole college has traditions. So whatever you want to talk about, go for it. I guess like I would say I am like a huge fan of a tradition we have called um, first year Olympics. Um, so basically every year in the spring, um, all of the first years from the different residential colleges will like, be put on like Olympic teams. Um, and we'll do like different activities like there's I think like inflatable jousting, there's Mario Kart racing, or um, I guess my first year like no one else in the college really was very good at rhyming. So they're like, Logan, like you're in a poetry group so you get to, you know, be in the rap battle. Um, and so I was just like in this huge like very chaotic like rap battle with like a bunch of first years from other residential colleges. Um, I was like crowd surfing at one point. I think someone like lifted me up into the air and was like holding up a microphone. Um, I had like a bandana tied around my forehead. It was a great time. Um, I was thriving. Um, but I guess point being is that like at the end of the day, like, you know, there's like the first like gold, you know, silver and bronze. Um, the first three colleges like all win some sort of prize. But it's also just like a great time to get closer to like other first years in your college to just be like silly and like wonderfully happy with like other people from other residential colleges and just like build community. Um, so I just love it because it was like, you know, just a great time to like act completely foolish, but also just get closer to people. I'd say my favorite tradition, it's called tap night. So tap night is the night when you kind of get like inducted into whatever like extracurricular groups that you're going to be a part of. Um, so my first year is when I auditioned for a Sabrosura and our tap night, um, the entire team went around to all of the new student, like accepted students dorms to kind of like collect us with like a giant speaker, like playing music and like chanting Sabrosura, like all over old campus. And it was like a defining moment <laughs> in my Yale experience. It was just so like full of energy and was one of the most fun nights. And then like after we collected everyone, we went back to La Casa and like had ice cream and played games and like got to meet the whole team. Um, and any group that you end up joining will probably end up doing a tap night. So you'll end up having them throughout your, like all your time at Yale, which has been really fun, so. You're all making me like super nostalgic for all of the traditions that I no longer get to take part in because I am now an administrator. Um, but I'm so glad that you guys have those experiences because I know the traditions at Yale can be, they're like far reaching and very strange sometimes, but also just a lot of fun all the time. So we have another question and it was directed towards Danasia, but I'm actually gonna kind of open this up to everyone as well. It said, can Danasia elaborate more on her time in Ecuador and how does study abroad at Yale work? So if any of you have done study abroad experiences, obviously Danasia, you can take this away as the first person to speak, but if anyone wants to chime in with what their experiences have been like with study abroad, that would be great. So as someone from New Haven, um, I kind of made a decision or like a commitment to myself to study abroad at some point during my Yale experience, just to leave New Haven for a little bit, um, despite how much I love it. So I like love how like possible studying abroad at Yale was. Um, I was always worried about the financial um, accessibility of it, but Yale has something called the International Summer Award. So all students on financial aid are able to receive this award proportional to the amount of aid that they're on up to $14,500 to fund a summer experience. So I was able to have my um, time in Ecuador fully covered. So I ended up doing um, a, a class um, with this program. So we were in New Haven for three weeks taking Spanish classes and a history class about 
Ecuadorian culture. And then we ended up going there for five weeks and I stayed with the host family. We had classes, we were partnered with um, a university there. We ended up taking a bunch of trips. We got to visit the Amazon rainforest, which is always a lifelong dream of mine. I was so, so excited about it. And it was, um, it was really great because not only did I have that phenomenal experience and get to make new friends along the way, but I was able to obtain a full semester's worth of credits. Um, so some of you might have been thinking like, how do students at Yale do it all? Um, everyone has different strategies for that. And for me, that was being able to take classes during the summer. So I got four credits this summer. I took two online classes last summer, and that really was able to free up my schedule. So if I decide I want to double major and do my academic program, I can do that. But for me, I also decided to use it as an opportunity to get more involved in some of my extracurriculars and student jobs and just to use it as a chance to like have a little bit more free time too and go support my friends at events, like go to speaker events and things like that. So I studied abroad my first year summer um, and Yale has really great study ab abroad opportunities. So I went abroad on the Light Fellowship, which is this really incredible fellowship that will fund um, a student to go study an East Asian language in either Japan, Korea or China. So I was in Beijing for a summer completely funded by Yale. I did not pay a penny um, except for the application fee, which they then refunded me. So it was a really great way. I totally forgot to mention this before, but I'm also also a first generation low income student. So I had always wanted to go abroad, but I didn't know how, how I could fund it. And Yale basically said, don't worry about it. We got it. Um, and it was really great. And I, I, I always heard about people talk about study abroad, like, oh, it was so life changing. And I went in like, how life changing can it be? I came back a different human being. Um, and Yale made it possible. And I actually just applied to the Light Fellowship again in hopes that I can go abroad next semester instead of just for one summer. So crossing my fingers that it works out. But again, it's very accessible and they walk me through every single step, did not have any confusion along um, on that journey. So it was great. Love studying abroad and hearing about experiences. I'm like, I need to go travel way more often. Maybe not right now during a pandemic, but you know, in the future. Um, so I have a, a good question, actually. It's, have you ever felt imposter syndrome and how did you get over it? Or even if you're not over it, you know, how are you still battling it currently? That's a great question. So whoever wants to kind of jump in there. Um. I mean, that is a really, really good question. Imposter syndrome is something that um, comes and goes. And I think most people will say that they've felt it at some point. Um, and I think that's just a reality of also like coming into your own and being this age where you're a little bit unsure of yourself um, and everybody else seems like they're doing things that are different from you. And you're like, maybe I should be doing that. Um, but what I think, first of all, I think the application process is good practice in trying to kind of put blinders on and focus on yourself rather than the people around you. Um, I know that like I struggled with imposter syndrome a lot during the application process. Um, and so I felt like I kind of was good by the time that I got to school at having a mindset of like really trying to focus on what I have um, and trying to maximize that rather than like trying to be a little bit of what everybody else is just because you get so much depth when you're focusing on yourself. Um, I think at Yale, because there's so much to do, it's really easy to have kind of like imposter syndrome, um, more as like competitive with yourself type of thing, where it's like, I should be doing all of these things because I'm so interested in this, um, but I only have enough time to do, you know, three or four things. Um, I do think that the community at Yale is a very supportive one, um, where people are really good, not only at being amazing themselves, but at celebrating each other. And one thing that's really helped me with imposter syndrome is how just like celebratory my friends are about what I'm doing. Um, and then also the joy that I get about like going to my friends like dance shows or like going to, you know, people's acapella shows or something um, and like feeling genuinely happy for them and then having them feel genuinely happy for me. Um, I've just felt like this community of like, really bringing people up. And of course, people are going to feel insecure, but um, like at some point, um, but the overwhelming feeling I get is like, I catch myself feeling bad. And then my friends are like, no, but you got this RC job. Like, congratulations. That's amazing. And, um, or, oh, you got this thing published in the YDN and they're like celebrating me in the dining hall. Um, so it's like celebrating the little victories along the way with your friends, I think has helped me a lot. 
I think this is a great question. Um, I, I'm a junior now, which is crazy by the way, but I still feel imposter syndrome. Um, it's just, it's a human thing and it's so normal and it's so fine. Um, but the way that I think about it is I will walk around Yale every single day and be like, oh, you are so cool. You're also amazing. How are you doing this? This is in incredible insight. And I realize like someone is probably thinking about that as about me as well. Like hopefully, you know, whatever. Um, but we all, we always think other people are amazing. And that's just because like the people here are genuinely amazing but everyone has their place for a reason. So like, I think all of us are here for a reason and none of us got in just, you know, it was, it's not by chance. Um, I think it, it's definitely something, what am I trying to say? I think everything happens for a reason. And when I feel imposter syndrome and I feel like I'm maybe not good enough, I know it's internal. Um, and so I work through it like what Kayla said with my friends and a lot of it is just recognizing your own victories and um, your own accomplishments and just believing that you you belong here and just saying it to yourself if you're if you're in high school right now probably you are um, and you're feeling doubtful just like say out loud right now like I can do it I'm worthy and it helps a lot Amy we're all over here thinking you're amazing so you are not wrong about that um, I love what you said, Michaela, about celebrating other people. I do feel like that's the culture here and that's just kind of prevalent. Even in working in the admissions office, I feel like we're constantly celebrating each other in the admissions office too. So I think it's just a Yale thing in general. Um, but in a similar vein to that question, you know, what's one thing you wish you would have known before actually coming to college? Uh, something you didn't know and you kind of wish like that would have been nice before I got here to know. I can take this one. So being a senior, reflecting on my past <laughs> three years, I wish I had known that even though I was coming in with this idea of like what I wanted to do and like what I was interested in, like that will all get broken down and like built back up and that is completely okay. Like you'll come in with a plan and it is okay if things don't go as planned because you'll find a new one and you'll find things that are better for you and you'll grow into those things. Um, so I came in thinking, oh yeah, I'm pre-med, like MCDB, which is the my molecular bio major. And that has all gone out the window. And I have found so many other things that I enjoy doing. Um, and just like rethinking what I want to do after I graduate and stuff. And that is completely okay. Like it's okay to break things down and build them back up stronger than they would have been before. So. I think like college, like like high school, sometimes you might like build this idea into your head that's like, there's only like four years, like I have to like, you know, do all these things by like a certain date. Um, so I would say two things, like one, like just be like very generous, like with your expectations, like for yourself and for other people. Um, and two, just like be open to like being surprised in like the most wonderful ways. Um, so I think spring semester of my sophomore year, there was this like advanced poetry writing class, like I really wanted to take with this amazing professor called Claudia Rankin. Um, I was like a huge fan of her, like everyone I knew was like a huge fan of her, I was like, I have to be in her class. Um, and so I applied and unfortunately like, there wasn't like a space for me in the class that semester. Um, so like I was crushed for a few days, but ultimately what happened was I ended up taking a different seminar called African American Literature in the Archives, um, where I got to work in the Binding Keyboard Book and Manuscripts Library, which just has like a lot of old scripts and like correspondence from like famous authors. Um, and then several months later, my professor from that class reached out to me and she's like, hey Logan, like I know you took my class, like I know you're interested in like links and hues. Um, I know you do some acting on campus and like we're like putting up like this zoom reading of like this unpublished like links and Hughes play and I immediately thought of you. Um, and so I was like, wow, like if like if I had never like not gotten into that class. I never would have taken that class with that professor and I never would have like stumbled on this opportunity. So like even like losses may like eventually turn into wins later down the road. So I'd say just go with the flow. <laughs> Most definitely. Going with the flow is still something I do now as an adult and it's something you should do kind of throughout your entire life because things are never going to go all the time the way that you expect. Uh, it's good to have that mentality. So we have another question which is, you know, if you're involved in one of our cultural centers, could you talk a little bit about how you got involved and maybe what your favorite part of the cultural center is and what that support environment is like? Definitely. So I mentioned before, um, I'm currently a peer liaison for the Asian American Cultural Center, but I actually got involved during my first year under CASA, which is the Chinese American Students Association. Um, the way I got involved 
they they just bombarded me with love and emails even during bulldog days in the little envelope with like my key card there was a handwritten letter from someone in the in the house and i felt so loved i was like you don't even know me and you're handwriting letters that's crazy um and i so i went to a ton of the events that they hosted they always host a first um, not first, but a back to school barbecue in their backyard. And I met so many people there and I'm really good friends still with a lot of people I met that day. And it was just the constant um, stream of events and opportunities to get to know the people in the Asian American Cultural Center. And, um, and that relationship has like kind of sustained itself. So whether that be through hot pot night or doing things like we did wontons one time, which is awesome. But having my own peer liaison also made me realize like this is a resource for me. I, I feel celebrated in this space. That's why I wanted to be involved in the future. That's why I'm a peer liaison now. And I hope that my PLEs will also feel that way. Um, I think it's so easy to get involved in the cultural centers. It's also really easy to feel like you can go to the other cultural centers. Um, they're not exclusive. And I, th I just think it's a great resource. I can also jump in. Um, so I actually got involved in the Afro-American Cultural Center or the house as we lovingly call it in a bit different way. Um, so both Word and Heritage Theater Ensemble, so the extracurricular groups I'm in are what we call resident groups. Um, so that means they officially meet in the Afro-American Cultural Center, they, like, they get funding um, during Black History Month, but also throughout the year, we'll just do programming or different events for them. Um, and it was just a great way to like connect like my love of art to like the actual cultural center itself. Um, so we'll do like different like poetry readings like in and around New Haven and Yale. Um, we'll teach workshop, workshops like local like New Haven high schools and just like a great way to like connect, I guess like your outside passions like with like the actual like um, like content of the cultural center. Um, so I'd say like you can definitely be like a peer liaison, you can you know be involved in extracurricular groups, you can just come there and hang out. Um, I've written many late night essays in like the second floor library of the AFM house. Um, so there's just so many uses for them. I'm gonna put a little plug in there for La Casa, uh, the Latinx Cultural Center. I had a great time being a part of La Casa when I was a student here. Um, I know that students really love the house and so I just wanna throw that out there as well. But all of the cultural centers are really great spaces on campus. Um, I have a really fun question, which is what's your favorite thing to do when you aren't in class or even broader? What do people do for fun in New Haven? I have so many answers to this question, but this is a student panel. So we're gonna let you guys answer this. So yeah, this question is, Wow, it just, there's so much there where we can go with it. So I guess I'll just do one answer to each of the questions. But my favorite thing to do when I'm not in classes is to attend different events that are happening. So I work in the Saber Head of College office, as I mentioned before, and part of my job is just going and putting up flyers that people send us about stuff happening on campus. So like as I'm doing that, I get to see things that are happening like every single day, all these phenomenal guest speakers coming in. I'm like, oh my gosh, like let me go get my calendar up to market and I have to go. So in this past year alone, like I've heard like Angela Davis come talk. I've heard Nikki Giovanni come talk. Like Kimberly Crenshaw like had a like not Zoom, but she like talked to one of my classes. Well, I guess I was in class during that one, but she like came to one of my classes and talked to us. And, and Kimberly Crenshaw is the person who coined the term intersectionality like we hear from like Ruth Wilson Gilmore, who's a prominent prison abolitionist. So all of these people who like I'm learning about in my classes, they're coming to campus, whether like for the class itself or just separately, um, like through a cultural center or a student organization is bringing them to talk. So I just really love taking advantage of those opportunities um, and just meeting the people that I'm studying or even meeting people who like might not necessarily have a like might not necessarily relate to my like my course of study, but I just want to hear from them. So sometimes we'll hear of like student like famous actors just walking around. Like one of my friends texted me and they're like, Mindy Kaling is here for a Timothy Dwight head of college tea right now. Like let's try to get in. So things like that will happen all the time. So anytime I'm not in class, like that's what I'm trying to do. And then one of my favorite things to do in New Haven is to frequent all of the food places that we have. Like they're like New Haven is a very, very big foodie city. We're world famous for our pizza. Um, I learned that any place like that ends in a pizza is called that because it's New Haven styled pizza. So I think that's really cool that we have our own like name for it. Um, and we're also home to like the world's first hamburger. But besides that, we have authentic cuisine from all over. 
Um, and I really love just trying to go to as, as many places as I can with my friends, whether grabbing ice cream at places or um, just like going online to this Facebook group called Free Food at Yale and seeing what food student organizations like have extra of and seeing if it's a place I've never tried before because then you get a taste for like the many different restaurants without ever having to spend a dollar. Um, on a, one of the more like day to day, more like mundane things I like to do outside of class, um, literally like spending time in my residential college in Hopper. I love that. And like for me during the week, um, you know, like when everybody's very busy and I'm not necessarily going to have time to like randomly go, I don't know, on, a, on the day to day, go do random big activities. Um, it's like the meals, like meals for me at Yale are like when I look back at my time, that's kind of like one of the main things I think about when I think about the Yale experience is like walking into the dining hall um, at, in Hopper specifically um, and um, like at lunch or dinner and there being an entire table of like first years that I know like well um, sitting there having like a million different conversations at once. I'm like, where on this table should I sit? Um, and I sit down and then people leave and then the next round of people come and I'm there for like two hours. Um, that was, that's like my main like social activity during the week. Um, and that's a way like that I have some of my strongest friendships are literally like conversations over meals. Um, so yeah, that's, it's just like, I literally just get like a feeling of like warmth and happiness when I think about meals at Yale. I spent way too many, too much time in dining halls while I was at Yale. <laughs> Logan, did you want to jump in with something? Yeah, just really quick. Go for it. Running theme of of, of food. Um, I, guess, I guess we all love food. Um, I really love cooking um, and cooking with my friends in particular. So all four cultural centers and all I think fourteen residential colleges have their own kitchens. Um, so one of my like closest friends at Yale, like we discovered like very early on in our friendship, like both of our grandparents were farmers. Um, and like they're very adept at just like naturally foraging and like foraging like herbs and like wild mushrooms in and around New Haven. Um, so a lot of the times like how we'll just spend my spare time is like they'll hit me up and be like, hey, like I went on a mushroom forage today. Like, do you want to make dumplings? And I'll be like, heck yeah, let's make dumplings. And we'll just like spend like two or three hours like cooking in like one of the residential college kitchens and like serve a feast for like all of our friends. Um, so yes. Logan, where, where were all of our invites? <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, so we're about to get deep, y'all. I know we were just on a really kind of like fun high question, but in what ways has Yale helped change you into becoming a better person? I know, it just got real. I can, I can start if people are still thinking. Um, I'm still thinking too. I think Yale, to me, the, the biggest transition from high school to college was the sense of collaboration and that people are, are here for you to grow and succeed. Um, and it's not a competition at, at all. And so I think Yale has made me a better person because I just feel like a stronger team player here. Um, I genuinely am invested in not just like my own development, but everybody around me because they just show me so much love and I, I had never felt that before. Um, something I always think about is like, I, I think about how I'm not the same person I was during my first year of college, but I'm also not the same person as I was last month. And I think that's because Yale just constantly pushes you to grow and improve um, in the best way possible. And because everyone around you is doing such incredible things, I, I also like love to tell my friends this, but sometimes if I'm sitting in a circle of friends or just walking down um, like Hill House or something, I just have to actually pause and stop myself and realize that I'm so blessed. Like, how am I here right now? How do I know all these cool people? That's so crazy. And that makes me want to be better. Um, and that's an everyday thing. I think for me one of the like first of all I think I've changed like Amy was saying so much since coming to college um, in I'm becoming closer and closer to the person I've always like wanted to be um, ever since I started school um, and I think that's like what Amy was just saying there's this growth mindset where like everybody I feel like the, like one of the main things that Yale students have in common is like everyone is constantly pushing to make themselves a better version of themselves. Um, and that's a very contagious thing to do. Um, but I think for me, like one of the main ways 
um, has been just in terms of curiosity. I've always been like a curious person, but um, Yale students are so curious, not only about like the world and about academics, but also about each other. And like this very genuine curiosity in other people um, is something that like I have loved so much from the other people at Yale around me. And I think it's, it's rubbed off on me where now I find myself like being able to engage in like much longer, deeper conversations with people because of what I've learned from the people around me at Yale. Um, so yeah, curiosity just in general is like a huge thing that I'm happy to have learned from, from Yale. For me, I've gotten a lot more confident in my ability to shape the spaces that I'm in and transform them into what I want them to be. Um, one of the big reasons that I chose Yale is because of how receptive they are to like students' desires and like how like fundamental to its mission as a university really it is to like have students who are constantly transforming the university into better and not only like honoring all the traditions that we have, but like not being afraid to be very innovative and take the university in a direction that aligns with like a place where they feel like they belong. Um, so I'm able to do that on very small scales. Like for example, in, my, in one of my seminars that I took, one of my favorite classes at Yale, it was called Education and Empire. It's a class where we like track the like colonial histories like within the education, like, education system. And in that class, we got to like talk to our professor about the syllabus as we we're going through it and like offer suggestions. Like we were like, this is something that I really want to see more of in this class right now in this moment. This is something that like we think we would like to be doing for our final project as an alternative to like writing this long final essay because we think like it is a better way of showing what we've learned in this class. So then I ended up writing a YDN op-ed um, about like the history of Yale, which I thought was really cool. Um, but then you're also able to do that through like student activism um, and like by tapping into different networks and like supporting the communities that you're a part of. Um, and I like just never envisioned myself like having that confidence um, before I came to Yale, but they really do support you in trying to shape this into a place that you feel happy and like you can thrive in. Y'all are going to make me cry, uh, but before you do that, we obviously have students coming from all over the world. And so this is a very important question. What is the weather like at Yale? Okay, I just spoke, but I can take this question as someone born and raised in New Haven. Um, New England does go through all four seasons. So when you come to Yale, um, it typically is like very hot. It's a little sticky, um, but it's nice that like everyone's hot and sticky and encourages you to go outside instead of staying in your room a little bit and meeting new people. Um, but then it does get kind of chilly in the winter. But even with that, there's a lot of excitement since people are coming from all over. It's a lot of people's first time experiencing snow. Um, so then there ends up being like this big like snowball fight on old campus, which is where all the first year students live. So even though it is chilly, like you get to have like this shared experience and like for me like I see snow all the time in New Haven but it was really great to like witness that for other people and to like be part of like their first snowball fight or like creating like sports and things like that and then going into duty which are, is this like late night events that the first year council is told from 10 p.m to 1 a.m and like go get hot chocolate together and make new friends so that was really exciting um it also can get pretty um like rainy in the spring in the fall there's like lots of leaves and it's like chilly as well but because of those seasons again there are so many opportunities with them to have like so many like specific seasonal events um so for example my college state we always go apple picking in the fall and then we like have this big day in our head of college's house where we all go and bake different like baked goods using all the apples that we have um, which is one of my favorite things to do in my residential college um, but then we also have a ski trip in the winter. So there are things like that. Um, and then since people are coming from all over the country, like again, there are resources for people who like might be worried about things like affording a winter jacket. Like we have a safety net fund that's um, there for, for needs like that, that might arise. Um, so the weather really just is an experience that we all have together and your peers are there to make sure you're properly um, equipped for it. I had one of my first year seatmates was from California and she went shopping within the school and she came back super proud and she was like, Denisha, I got my winter coat. And I was like, 
this coat's going to take you through October. Like, let's go back. We'll try again. Um, so your peers are there for that. I mean, we all figure it out together. Um, and it's, it ends up being really nice. I think that was a, a pretty good overview of the weather. It can be a little unexpected at times, but there are always people to kind of get you through it. Um, and also winter jackets to get you through it. Um, so we have another question, which is kind of fun. So what are a couple words that you would use to describe the vibe of Yale and the students at Yale? I can take this one. I'd say one of the biggest words, that, like words that comes to mind immediately is supportive. Um, it comes across like in academics, like in your classes, when you meet other students within your major and you like make your little friend groups and like have your study groups and are always helping each other study for tests and like problem sets and stuff. Um, but it also really it comes across in like extracurriculars. So one of my favorite things like about being a part of the dance community is that everyone is so supportive of each other. And like you'll have friends like within other dance groups and we always make it a thing to go to each other's shows. So like if we have like Sabro and like RB, which is the like hip hop dance group on campus, we'll have shows the same week on alternating days. We'll like make it a thing with, with within each group to say, okay, like what day are we going to RB show? And then people start making posters and right before the show starts, everyone's like Sabro loves RB. And like, it's just so supportive and you're gonna like feel it in all aspects of life at Yale, so. Um, I think one like phrase I would say is like, genuine like genuine passion um is like a huge thing at Yale and it was one of the reasons why I actually ended up choosing Yale because um like yes we have access to so many pre-professional like um just like and like just professional internship help and stuff like that but I like really loved how Yale feels like it's very authentically like passionate about learning and also just about extracurriculars like that was a huge thing I realized how invested people are in their extracurriculars um and also just like in creating communities for themselves and stuff it just felt like it feels like Yaleys are very like genuinely passionate about what they're doing um and that is also like a very contagious thing um so it's like it doesn't feel like it's a resume building um, culture, it feels much more like, no, I, if I'm spending a lot of time on this, it's because I really genuinely love it and I'm trying to get good in this area. Yes, supportive, passionate students. That's what we want on campus. Um, so I have a really quick one before we get to our last question, which is, what is your favorite class or what is one of your favorite classes since I know I had several while I was here, but just one that you can pick out from your time here so far, what has been one of your favorite classes? So Michaela mentioned this class. I think she meant English 120. That's the one. Yes, it is so good. I am not an English major. I'm not really a writer. That class changed my life. I know that's like a common theme, life changing experiences here. Um, but you really get to, you write, you essentially write five papers that all cover different things. I wrote um, a paper about my family and their nail salon. I wrote a profile of my high school and I just dug so deep into myself. I was like, wow, this is so many words that I have. And I learned so much and I, I feel like I really grew from that class. And would have never expected, the name is so, uh, English 120, what does that mean? Um, but it was incredible. I'd say my favorite was a West African dance class that I took like a year ago. And it was something that I never thought I would have the opportunity to take at Yale of all places, um, like a dance class. And it was so cool. Um, the, everyone that was in the class got super close. And it was just so nice to be able to like have this one class two hours, twice a week. Um, and just be in the dance studio the whole time and like learning all of these rhythms and like learning about the culture. Um, and it was definitely like my favorite class at Yale hands down. Anybody else want to mention one? Michaela? Um, I'll quickly mention a first year seminar I took second semester, um, which was called, I think it was called on activism, the visual representations of protest. It was an art class though. So it was an art and activist class. Um, and it was really small. It was like maybe seven or eight of us. Um, and our teacher was a professor at the School of Art, but also just super engaged in activism throughout her entire life. And we like went through different decades ever since the 60s until now and looked at the different visual strategies that um, activists use and then made our own. 
Um, and, may, and then at the end, we had a whole class project about something that we wanted to do at Yale. So that was remote. And we did like a bunch of visuals and stuff about like Yale and um, their relationship to New Haven during the pandemic and like trying to create this whole thing um, virtually. So it was a really incredible experience, not only just be, not only because of the content, but also the community. And like that teacher still reaches out to us now about all the different activist stuff happening in the US and how we can get involved and like her thoughts on, the, on like the visuals that are being used. Um, so it's like, it was just so cool to be able to like learn from this professor and like not only her art expertise, but also just her passion and activism and her kind of like sharing that with us. It felt more like almost like a um, project that we were all doing together with the professor rather than like a teacher student relationship all the time. All right, guys, you've answered so many questions, but I do have one last question that I want to ask, which is, you know, if you could give any piece of advice to juniors or seniors who are going to be applying to college in the next few years or this year, um, you know, what would that advice be? And I know that you all have really, really great advice. So let's try to keep it to like one or two pieces of advice because we are coming on time right here. I can start off with this one. Um, so I'd say definitely um, when you're looking into where you want to go to college, look for a place that you can call home. Um, because no matter where you go, like you're gonna have the res you're gonna have the resources that you need to get a good education. But like you need to find a place that you're gonna be able to like spend your four years at and really enjoy and be able to call that place home and grow as a person. So that's why your phone is blowing up. You're so popular. <laughs> Anyone else want to give a piece of advice or a, you know, why I chose Yale, whatever you want to end with? Two quick pieces of advice for me. Um, one, I'd say go into the process with an open mind. Like one of my very few, one of my, two of my only requirements when going into the process were like, A, I want to go to school outside of New England because I was really into this idea of going far away from home. But then I realized like Yale is the perfect school for me. And like I realized New Haven is the greatest small city in America. Why would I leave it? So like that quickly changed. So I'd say like definitely just open yourself up, like think about like the things that you think you want, why you want them and see like what school would be a great fit for you. It feels like exactly like Crystal say, said. And the second one would be to have fun. Like I know that sounds like very easy as someone who is like now done with the college process. But it really can be a chance for you to reflect on like what you're passionate about in life. Like what might you want to study in school? Like here's an opportunity to think on these cool questions and like figure out your voice and craft a response and have fun. And then once you're done and you're taking some of the pressure off of your college application, like you can also have time to enjoy your senior year that you only have once and to hang out with friends. Um, so that would be my advice to students. Yeah, I would, my, my advice would be similar. It's that like when you're choosing a school, it's very easy to like focus very much on the school element of it, but it's not just a school. It's also where you're going to be living for the next four years. It's like, it's your home. It's your community. Um, it's your location. It's, it's not just a school. Um, and like the school elements of it, yes, there are differences between schools, but I think the real in like the real differences between different colleges are the intangible, more like community elements of it. So even just you guys joining in with like this type of event and like looking for this type of event at different schools, it's I think the most important thing when you're trying to find a college. Um, and then in terms of like advice on um, like actual application, Danae talked about this too, and I talked about this before. I do a lot of college mentoring, and I actually really love the college application process um, and like working with students through it because it is such a turning point in people's lives, and it can be this kind of like incredible moment of self reflection and like a give you direction um, if you do it in like a healthy way. So I think just really trying to focus on like mental health. Um, trying to really talk to you, have conversations with your family about your experiences and how they've led to who you are now. Um, but just like really trying to like look deep in yourself is it's a really amazing kind of pause or at least maybe not pause, but like turning point, like pivot point, if you make it that. I would say be kind to yourself. That's sorry, Jill. I just wanted to say like, it's a very Do tough it. process. Um, it's so tough. Like we've all been through it. Please be kind to yourself. Take care of yourself. Take breaks when you need to. You're more than just what you can fit in 650 words. Just remember that um, and, and try your best to get, we're all rooting for you. So yeah. <laughs> we are all rooting for you. Logan, because everyone's had the floor, jump in. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess my like top advice would be like, don't overthink it and like, 
at, at, like at the end of the day, like have faith in yourself and like be honest with yourself. Um, I like rewrote my Common App essay like four times. And I think the first three times I approached it from like this really unhealthy place of like, how can I like make myself a product? Like what are the like admissions officers want to see most? And, like, I think the fourth draft, I was like, okay, like I can't fit my whole life into 650 words. So what I'm most passionate about, like what do I want to share most? If I only have like, you know, 10 minutes to talk to someone, what would I want, you know, to mention to them? Um, so just trust that like you have done like so much amazing work to like get you to the point like where you are ready to apply and just like have faith in yourself. Y'all are basically like ambitions officers at this point. So I might just like take a step back and let you do my job. Um, but thank you all so, so much for answering all those questions. And thank you to our audience members for asking all of those great questions. Obviously, like Maura said in the chat, we did not get to all of them. There were so many good ones, but we do have platforms on our website where you can ask those questions and you will get answers. So please do do that. Also, please check out the other Mo events that are happening throughout the rest of this week. And then also next week, uh, if you haven't already, we're all also offering a lot of things virtually throughout the fall, virtual information sessions, Mondays through Friday. We have student forums where you get to literally ask, like you did tonight, questions of some of our students. Those are at noon every day, EDT, uh, Monday through Friday. So please take a look at those, sign up for them. Uh, just, we do want to hear from you. We want you to stay in touch. Um, but thank you for spending your Friday with us or Saturday morning, depending on where you are. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.